Uh, we're getting towards the latter half of August here, and so it's crunch time with some of these projects. Uh, we also finally have rain in the forecast tonight, so crossing my fingers, we finally get it. We badly need it. Um, but I'm sitting in this bean field, it's an acre and a half, I've talked about it before, and actually I'm pretty happy with as little rain we've had, how the beans look. Um, but I'm going to try to maximize the amount of food in this acre and a half. I talked about the field before and why I'm doing smaller plots from a bow hunting perspective and not, you know, three, four acre late season plots. Uh, but for that reason, I want to maximize what's in that acre and a half. So I'm going to overseed this. It's just a custom blend that I'm trying out this year. Um, overseed that into these beans. And I think these beans are a prime target for doing it right now because they are a little more open. I wasn't able to get the beans very deep into this because of the pasture and the farmer came through and raked this. I didn't get the greatest germination as far as being a full field. So there's a lot of little openings where, you know, seeding this right now will, will actually do pretty good. Um, I'm going to do the same thing on the other field as well, but because that one was planted in tight rows, it's basically a full canopy right now. So I'm going to do it a little bit later when the beans, some of the foliage starts to come off of that. Um, but I'm going to get this done. I actually went through and spot sprayed some of the thistle that was coming up pretty strong in here. So once that dies off, there will be a lot of good openings for the seed to, to grow and germinate. Um, again, just wanting to maximize this acreage and the amount of food I can fit inside of it. So I'm going to get that project knocked out first. All right, the next project I'm gonna knock out is move my cameras to better fall locations. I've seen a huge uptick in buck activity in the last probably 10 to 12 days. Got a little cooler weather and they're really, you know, starting to move around a lot more. And I've seen this a lot. I mean, I could date back to like George Brett and some of those bucks I hunted. But a lot of times I'll see them this time of year. Most of my properties aren't good summer properties and they usually live somewhere else. But right around this time of year, late August into September, they start making these little strolls, these little excursions back to their fall core area. So they'll pop in for some pictures and then pop out. And I've seen that a bunch these last 10 to 12 days. And I've also seen um, them start to hit mock scrapes um, pretty good the last 10 to 12 days too. So I love this time of year. I love seeing the bucks starting to you know, display some dominance, um, start to establish that pecking order. Um, so I love getting the cameras officially on mock scrapes um, or fully on mock scrapes this time of year. So I'm moving it. Obviously, you can see this camera is on a, a fence gap for the summer. I did mark a scrape from last year when I, right after I bought this property, I, I took a walk and I marked some spots on Onyx. So I'm going to go check that out. I might put this camera down here in the woods on that scrape. I think it was actually on that tree, but look at this trail. I might put it right here this will be better here was the scrape that I had marked on onyx you see the old scrape remnants it's like almost a secondary trail but like six seven yards away there's a major trail so I may there's another good tree I can make a scrape on so I may actually put the scrape there I think I'll cover more movement I'm gonna keep rolling here, see how much I can get done today. In the meantime, we're gonna go join Caleb, who's finally getting a chance to start some of his fall prep activities. Um, and if you haven't got a chance yet, make sure to check out Chasing November Season 7. It's live now. Uh, Grant did a fantastic job on it. It's a really good season. So check that out if you haven't, and we'll go join Caleb.
That's a keeper. Let's see if I can pull her out. About all we need there. This should be about enough. Holy smokes. Darn near every tree has got a rub on it. So we just hit public. So this edge right here, everything down this way is public. But let's start with this cell, this home cell camera. Let's do a little scouting right here, see if we can find a good tree. I'm thinking that tree, Gavin, and kind of angle it like back this way is what I'm thinking. I'll put that vine right off right here. It should be perfect. That'll work. Do a sail test, the battery ain't well. well, it's August 20th, and Gavin and I are out on some public ground today. Starting to throw the cameras out for the first time for the year. You know, I've been so busy uh, managing other people's ground this, year, this summer and spring that I haven't had a lot of time for myself to get cameras out. Normally I got a nice hit list put together by now, but I've got about 10 cuttybacks in my bag right now, so we're gonna start throwing these cuttybacks up. But like I mentioned, Gavin and I are on a piece of public, and uh, growing up, that's where I did all of my hunting. My parents lived on a piece of public ground, and Collins and I, at a young age, that's where we gained all of our knowledge. It's really where we started bow hunting ourselves. And over the years, you know, I've been hunting a lot of permission pieces on private, and I really just wanted to keep getting back after this public ground. So this year, I found a really good piece. Um, it looks great from the aerial. It's got a lot of ag surrounding it, but it is on a river bottom. Um, and there should be a good number of deer down here, but right where we're at, we got the first cutty back up. Um, this is gonna be the home camera. And as you guys can see behind me, we put a vine scrape up. So before I came out here, I called the DNR and in Iowa, you cannot put any kind of mineral or feed attractant in front of a camera anywhere on public ground just because it's not natural. So I called the DNR in each county that we're um, putting cameras up today. And I asked them if I can bring vines in from a private property and put a zip tie um, on them up on a branch and work the dirt with a rake underneath, put a little forehead gland lure on them, and they said, no problem, man, have at her. Uh, so pretty excited about that. We have some kind of attractant here, and with it being August 20th right now, these scrapes are really gonna start opening up over the next few weeks, diving into September. So I was lucky enough to gain permission um, from private to access from the private down in here to the public. So our access is just gonna be phenomenal. But where we are right now, like I said, it is a home camera, and if you look back to this ag, we're right where corn and beans meet in the middle. We've got a nice little draw that runs straight through the, through the middle of these two ag fields. And you can just see trails going all around me, funneling right down here. It's a nice pinch point. So this vine scrape should get some pretty good action here um, over the next few weeks and into the, into the season. But, you know, like I said, we got a lot of cameras to put up. Gavin and I are already making a plan of attack. It looks like there's a really nice oak tree off to my right that would be a nice little 20 yard pop shot. And uh, I think Adam's calling his shot. Maybe one of us might uh, arrow a buck here come October, November. But I'm pretty excited about this piece. Gavin and I are going to do a little walk in, a little speed scouting, and uh, see if we can find some better areas to put these vine scrapes up. We're going to check those spots out, put some more cameras up, and uh, hopefully we get some bucks here pretty soon on camera. Yeah, it's solid there.
think two more. Let's just see if we can find a decent trail. Right here, Gavin. Right here. a bed right here. And, uh, we just made her. One of my favorite spots right here, man. There's a lot of trails coming together. All right, guys, we're just wrapping things up at camera number seven here. Um, pretty excited about this piece. You know, when Gavin and I initially came down here, really wasn't um, expecting much as far as sign just because it's public ground, it's in Iowa. You never really know what you're gonna find. So one thing that we were looking for when we were in here speed scouting was natural pinches or even areas where you have really thick cover transitioning out to open cover. Normally that you can find a few trails through there, um, but one of the spots that I'm actually most excited about was a natural pinch that we found. There's a slough that normally runs through this piece. And um, between that slough and these open ag fields, it was a smaller chunk of timber. We're hoping that it might pinch those deer down a little bit come uh, October, November. And um, something that we mentioned earlier, just to help pinch these deer down a little bit, make an attractant to these cameras, was adding a vine scrape. Just re to reiterate, I did talk to the DNR per county and they all gave me permission to rake the soil, um, to bring in my own vine, and to uh, cinch those vines onto a stick above or a branch above. Um, but like I said, Gavin and I are both gonna probably be doing a little bit of hunting down here in the fall, probably more so um, geared towards uh, November in the rut. But after walking it today, I mean, Gavin and I probably saw a couple dozen deer maybe. Um, no big bucks or anything, but here in the next couple weeks, Gavin and I are gonna get out here and on that access that we have from the private, like we mentioned earlier, there's a few bean fields out there. So we'll try to get a long lens on it and see if we can find any of these public bucks coming out to this private ag. Also in the next couple weeks, I have a few different um, farms this year on private. And I had a couple things happen to me this year. Uh, so some things are gonna change drastically, but I think more so for the better. Um, so I'm really excited to introduce a few bucks I have a lot of history with over the next couple weeks and uh, start showing you guys these farms and what we've been so busy with this summer. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching the show this week and I hope to see you back next time.